Yeah, before, because um, I think the, the old one, the old uh, code of conduct, code of practice uh, was called the uh, General Social Care Council. This has been closed. And I'm sure there's a new set of agreed uh, of standards which are, are coming up. And maybe by now I'm talking, it is out. I haven't researched it uh, for a while. But I'd like you to look at this if you are in England and Wales. Uh, also refer to the Skills for Care website. I think they do update your materials regularly. This is what you're supposed to be looking at really in terms of the, the, the source of information for agreed ways of working. And uh, it'll give you a good guide for e every employer must have their own summarized versions from this uh, uh, umbrella body of conducts, which um, we have previously called the uh, a general, general Social Care Council. That's very important. Let's go back to the, uh, to the syllabus uh, that we're looking at at the moment and continue the uh, uh, discussions. So are we, ha are we happy with that? And I hope you're okay making track of this. I'm giving a general overview and I'd like in your own free time to do more research on these aspects. So we are looking at uh, the agreed ways of working as part of your responsibility as a caregiver or social uh, care worker. Now, if I look uh, critically at uh, 2.2.2, uh, 2. where am I now? Sorry, I've just lost my, lost my page. 2.2. Understand why it's important to work in ways that are agreed with your employer. Some of the reasons, in fact, one of the major reasons is that you will deliver according to the required standards. If you do your own stuff, your own thing, you'll be outside the legal requirement. And you're opening yourself up to unnecessary accusation and possible litigation. And also, it may be harmful for the service user. So the agreed ways of working are critically important so that you may provide the care that is required to be received by the service user. And in fact, uh, the, the, the policies which the uh, employer has uh, will also indicate the procedures that you follow. Sometimes you find that uh, some companies are in their infancy, they're just developing. There are still some guidelines that they should be able to provide to you. And if they've passed the, 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 the certification, they will have been exposed to the, uh, to the general uh, code of uh, practice. And then the importance of having uh, you to work in the agreed ways with your employers is that you're actually performing according to the standards which are agreed. And also they'll be measurable for your progression. So we find that there's a wide range of things that you've got to take into consideration. So I would like you as a challenge to research and list some of the reasons why it's important to follow a good ways of working. And some, some of the, uh, the, the points are coming across the screen there, you can see the reasons why. Now, you should also know how to access full and up-to-date details of a good, ways, a good ways of working. How do you do that? In the care setting or like any employment sector, the, the re setting, there is a hierarchy. You have a line manager who has a manager on top and the director. So if you're working below a line manager, that's the first port of call. Every so often, if the organization is properly run, they should have meetings regularly, maybe once every month, or as a case might be, to update you of any changes or anything that needs to be sort of put into context. Especially in the care industry, there is a lot of dynamics. You should also be given information as a pointer where you can go and see this information, uh, any changes. Go on the website, Schools for Care in the UK, CQC itself in the UK, and in the context where you are in your country, because I know care now is across the board nationally, internationally, go and look at systems, uh, maybe your, your, your civic centers um, uh, where uh, they the, the, the post the, the regulations, go and find out if there isn't, if there isn't, your staff must sit down and look at the human rights as well. Look at what sort of 
general guidance can be given to those who are looking after the community. Because I know some parts of Africa, some parts of the third world countries, even some of the first world countries are not fully developed like, like it's in the UK where some regulations are in place. There must be some structure in which you can be sort of guided. It's important. So these are the uh, ways in which you can get updates. But if we're focusing in England and Wales, it is very well developed. Materials are available. So your line manager must have copies. Let's also look at uh, the next uh, point, the importance of working in partnership with others. Care giving oh, is a multi-agency issue. How do we mean, or what we mean by this? Consider yourself as a center there, it is the service user, then we have you, the service provider, then we have the district nurses, we have the police, we have the, uh, 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 the council, we have all safeguarding bodies or other regulated bodies. It escalates as it goes. And we have the family. So all these are different agencies. You are going to work with them hand in hand. Let's have a look at 3.1. Understand why it's important to work in partnership with carers, because there are other carers apart from you, families, advocates, and others who are significant to an individual, as I mentioned before, the district nurse or the GP, and as, as the case might be. 3.2, recognize why it's important to work in teams and in partnership, as we're going to talk about this holistically. And number three, be aware of attitudes and ways of working that help improve partnership with others. Okay, let's go to the uh, um, to the uh, to the three point one, and we we can draw the links to the other learning outcomes under three. When you go to work in the service user's home or house, the care plan itself is a focal point for communicating between different agencies. In the care plan, you notice that some information will be available to tell you who else is involved with the service user. It could be a family member. I remember one day I was doing an observation of uh, uh, my candidate. He, each time he went there, he found that a family member had come and did certain things. For example, he, he, she would say, I've done A, B, C, D. Therefore, when the carer comes in there, he will begin on an aspect that is yet to be done. He won't repeat the same things which has been done by the family member. And after that, he also finishes another carer because it's short shift, sometimes half an hour, sometimes one hour. So another carer would come and pick up where things were left off or repeat the cycle if it says this must be repeated at, at, at three, especially for those who are on medication because that's another component. They are trained and they give at certain times. They record. So there is working together there. Now the importance of working together is that you will recognize the input of others so that you do not replicate what others have done and you communicate there through the care plan effectively. And also at the time you're picking up the job, they will tell you who else is involved. So that's quite important. Sometimes it could be how, how, having to find out exactly what has changed. If you have got the consent and the right, you will escalate to the manager to find out if there's any changes which haven't been updated. Sometimes things are missed out. You are supposed to put things right. So you find that uh, also, apart from colleagues who work with you, uh, the, the GPs uh, or the district nurses will have things that they record in there or things that are communicated to you via your manager or sometimes directly if need be. It depends on how you have agreed to work with others. So as a, as, a, as a team player, you must put into context other people's input. Otherwise, you find that you can repeat certain things which have been done already, or you might omit thinking another person has done it, which is why here, effective communication comes into place, very critical, very important. Now, there are certain attitudes that can improve working partnership. If you have a right attitude, 
to effective communication, you are going to work with others properly. If you can listen carefully to what others are saying, that attitude is important because it will make sure that you receive the right information. And also, if you can pinpoint errors by way of escalating to the right agency, it can help safeguarding the service user. Mind you, this is about person-centered support. If you overlook errors which other people have uh, uh, done, you're actually creating uh, an environment of propagation of errors which may harm the service user and in the end yourself because it might dent your own career. So working in the multi-agency aspect, it becomes important and when you begin to point out certain working practices which are good, they can be enhanced. And if you point out working practices which are not good, they can be eliminated through training. It's not always that people are fired if they don't perform well. It's a matter of capacity building. So such an attitude is very important. And in fact, one of the things that I recommend is to have a post-it note or a little notebook in your pocket. When you're working, if you perceive certain things that are, uh, uh, are not actually usual to you and it requires you to go on for training, you record it. Or changes which uh, requires you to have new knowledge, record it. Then go to your manager, be honest, say now this has happened and I've noted that there's a new equipment as we were expecting that the service user will be using a scooter or whatever the case might be or a Zima frame. If you've never seen a Zima frame before and you don't know how it works or even a wheelchair, just ask for you to be trained in that aspect. They can send you to some of the centers that are available or in house training. So that's, those are good attitudes. What I'd like you to do at this point in time is for you to make a list of your own attitudes that you can identify which can improve a working in partnership. You may pause the video and uh, replay it once uh, afterwards. Thank you.